So today, we are going to meet up with my speaking coach. And as a professional speaker, it's really good to have a coach and really good to evaluate uh, what's coming out of my mouth and how it's coming out of my mouth and the whole presentation because it's so easy to get caught up in a rut and do the same old thing. Like Sometimes I feel like even when when I try to vary things up, it's the same old presentation, so I'm hoping today to gain some new insight into things that I can improve to make it more effective, and you know, it's going to make it better for the audience, and it's going to make it better for me, so it's a real win. So I'm super excited, and uh, hope everything turns out okay. So Paul, thank you for being here. I'm working on my speech. I'm going to rewrite it. And typically when I write things, I put my speech into three parts or five parts. The opening, the bread on your sandwich, the building a sandwich, the the closing, (laughs) the other piece of bread and and the content, which is the meat and cheese and all that other stuff. And for my content, typically have three points. And the way I think of it is just point, story for each point, and application. And that's just kind of what I keep in mind and I go from there. What thoughts do you have for me to make it even more effective? Having a structure is important. Okay, you you've already built in your structure, and that's what the building your sandwich model is all about too. Is maintaining that structure, right? Give your audience this Mm -hmm. to chew on, right? What's also very important is when you're rewriting or rethinking or repositioning your speech or your content, is being very intentional about the words that you use and the actions, because you talk about choreography as a way of conveying story, of storytelling, which is important, yeah. right? These things are details, intentional details that your presentation needs, and you need to think about those items very specifically. So how do I get myself to that place? I'll give you an example. Okay, there's an exercise that you can do even in your own kitchen. Okay. And this exercise actually involves you building your own sandwich. Really? In this case, when you're building a sandwich, it's going to be a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. It's going to be a lot less more, um, it's going to be less uh, uh, creative than some of the artisan sandwiches we've, we've been talking about. Um, but it'll be inside your own kitchen with some of the simple ingredients that most of us have in our kitchen. Okay. Our bread, our peanut butter, our jelly, right? I like it. So let me give you an example of how important details are, intentional details are, in telling the simple story or doing the simple actions of building a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Okay? For example, how would you even begin that process in your own kitchen? Well, I would make sure the kitchen is clean. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good start. I would wash my hands and um, possibly use hand sanitizer too because I really care about that. And what I would do is I would get a piece of bread and get some peanut butter. and Stop right there. Okay. Sounds picky. You'd get a piece of bread. How would you get that piece of bread? Is the piece of bread laying out on the counter that you just cleaned? Is the bread inside a bag? And if it is inside a bag, how are you getting inside that bag? Are you ripping open that bag? Does the bag have a tie that you have to untie, right? So try telling that story again. As opposed to just getting a piece of bread, be specific in how you would retrieve that piece of bread. So what I would do is I would go to the refrigerator and on top of the refrigerator is a bag of Trader Joe's bread. Good detail. I would grab the bag with both hands, bring it to the counter, and it's tied with this weird knot, so I just probably take a scissor and just cut it right open. And what I would do is you have that first part of the bread that's the edge, I don't like that. I would simply remove that delicately and throw it into the garbage. And then with my fingers, take the first slice in the bag and slowly put it on the counter. So good, let's point out something that you did and you were very intentional. Maybe you thought you were being over dramatic and how you were doing those things, but that's the point. The whole exercise is a drama. You have to be over dramatic to make some of the very clear, simple points. And to extend this, right, you're not just getting the peanut butter. You are grabbing the jar with your left hand, you are using your right hand to counterclockwise 
unscrew the top of the peanut butter, taking the top of the jar, placing it down on the counter, letting go with your other hand so that the jar of peanut butter is now open and resting on the counter, mm. right? We haven't even gone into the peanut butter yet, mm. but look at all these steps that are involved with getting the peanut butter jar opened. How can you get peanut butter without the jar being opened? It's silly to talk about abstractly, but in the context of your presentation and being mindful of rewriting, reshifting, refocusing, and moving around when you're doing your presentation. These details are not overdramatic. They're not silly. They're important. You have to keep that in mind.